everyone. Welcome to another episode of Cosmic Conversations. I am your host, Marla Martinson, and I am so excited today because I have back to the show after a few years, uh, Tina yeah. Louise Spalding. Welcome, Tina. Thanks for joining me again. Oh, thanks for inviting me, Marla. Yeah, tell us what you've been doing. Um, what's new? I think you're in Arizona. Well, I... <laughs> I have been in Arizona for the last four months. I am actually a Canadian refugee. I fled the country in September, uh, right before they changed the entry, entry rules for the United States. I was actually in Arizona in September doing an event, and um, I heard that they were changing access rules to Canada and the United States. So I decided to stay as a, as a Canadian um, citizen. I have, I have six month tourist visa here with no application or anything it just because you're a canadian you get six months so i have been down here si since september but my dog was in canada so i had to fly back i i had to fly back up to seattle rent a car i went to the border somebody brought my dog over the border for me and then i drove all the way down to arizona again uh, so i literally for the last four months have had um the clothes that that person put in the car for me when she brought my dog over. So I've been renting a house. Um, it's a fully furnished house. So uh, yeah, I've been having the experience of leaving my home country and um, all of the emotions that, that, that come with that. So this is one of the things that they've been saying in the teachings is that these circumstances that we're facing, whether it be a loss of a job or, you can't travel and your job is travel or whatever it is, um, or your partner got vaccinated and you didn't, whatever the issue is that's come up, um, we are having emotions and feelings come up that we've never had before. But from a spiritual point of view, what this means is things in us that have been up until this point unconscious are becoming conscious. And this is why it's so important to have a spiritual practice of some kind to help you manage the feelings that are generated when these brand new thoughts come up. So for example, I left my house, I left my family, I left my furniture, I left my garden. And I made this very, very quick decision because I felt it was the right thing to do. And so I've had all of these feelings coming up. And so, um, you know, I've been doing A Course in Miracles for a long, long time. And I have not felt this way since I was a beginner. Wow. Having intense feelings of fear about things or guilt about things. But what I know, because I've been channeling these teachings, is, oh, these are, these are thoughts and beliefs that were not activated before. So we've all got this sort of repository of unconscious beliefs that are, that are generating experiences all the time. But until they're activated, you actually don't know they're there. They're unconscious and they're working uh, sort of in the background like a, you know, like a, a bad program in your computer. So, so what this intense time of growth and transformation is bringing us is an opportunity to see what's in our unconscious mind. Yeah. And what's going on? I mean, I, from a spiritual point of view, it's, it's the, it's a mass event from a, since there's one mind, right? So it's a subconscious and all of this. And when I think about all of the, um, uh, let's even say the trolls on social media, the violence on video games or TV or the media with all the negativity and everything, um, just like almost just came to a, a head and we had to slap us in the face. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I liken it to a big boil on your bum. You know, it's coming. You can feel it coming. But boy, when that thing erupts, yeah, it's not yeah. pretty. Oh, my gosh. Yes, <laughs> yes. No, but that's it. There are there have been toxins and, and things in our society for such a long time. Um, I mean, just think about the uh, consumption of pornography behind closed doors, right? It's something that's completely secret in people's lives. Right. But it holds a certain frequency. And and that frequency is being um, taken into people's body mind complexes and it is going to generate an experience. Now, yeah. it's not necessarily going to generate a happy sexual experience, especially if you're walk watching violence or mm -hmm. very degrading pornography. But that is, uh, I heard a statistic the other day that 98% of men are watching pornography these days. Oh my goodness. 90. So can you imagine the frequency that that is generating 
from all those people allowing that into their consciousness. It's, it's, it's no wonder that the world looks messed up. Think of all the violent movies that are out there, all of the violent video games. These are all being taken into people's minds and then they're generating a frequency which is going to manifest something of a like frequency. It's not going to manifest exactly the same thing something of a like frequency. So I think what we're seeing right now is the, the poisons of our society are being revealed, the corruption, the confusion, the loss of power that a lot of people feel, the loss of purpose that a lot of people feel. I think that's what we're seeing. And I think it's part of the ascension process because you can't heal something unless you see it. Right. Unless you acknowledge that it's there. And I think this is the big blindfold that's been taken off in the last couple of years, we are seeing censorship. We are seeing control by the media. We are seeing governments overriding what their people want to have happen. It was always there. It was just hidden. But now we're being given the opportunity to, to actually accept that it's there and go, okay, now what are we going to do about it? Well, the censorship is something that just shocked me. I mean, Incredible. living in America my whole life, well, you know, most of my life, and suddenly seeing that videos are being taken down and your things are being, you know, people are being targeted and for just sharing ideas. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. It's just shocking. And even though even here, maybe, you know, we have to talk in code so that the video won't get, you know. I know who, I mean, that's like living in freaking Nazi Germany. That's what they used yes. to have to do in Nazi Germany and Russia. They yes. would have to say code words so that the government who were listening to them couldn't hear them. So yeah, right. it's, it's and, and I think that's one of the things is, you know, this, um, this period of peace and abundance and, and ease that the West has had for since World War II has really lulled everybody into a deep sense of complacency. Oh, that could never happen again. And I think we're seeing in spades that it is happening again. And, and many people are with that with that who don't have our view think it's perfectly fine. They think that's great. Yeah, no, take that down. Don't, you know, or separate you from society. I've had a friend of, of a 40 year friendship. Uh, I got a nasty email uh, out of the blue saying, if, if you don't get the, you know what, we can't be friends anymore. And it mm -hmm. was pretty, pretty cruel and, and rude and uh, not, and I had never mentioned it or we never had an argument, nothing, but it was just that. No, that, but um, Marla, it comes out of our paws. <laughs> <laughs> People know, they know by what we're doing and what we're saying. And well, what she we're knew that about. I wasn't going to be doing that, but she got, you know, watching the mainstream media, they're saying, certain people saying, shame the people who don't do it. Uh, we have to force them. We have to se seclude mm -hmm. them, separate them, punish them, make their lives as difficult as possible to force them to do this. And then they, so I was, I, I and it was very interesting because I no, normally something like, if something like that ha would happen, I wouldn't be able to sleep at night. My heart would mm. be racing. I'd be thinking of a response. What did I do? What the response, like, I can't believe it, but I, what, none of that happened. I was just like, Okay, well, she's in mind controlled and, and to do that yeah. to a 40 year friendship over something, somebody else. Well, one of the things that I've used to help because I've gone through this whole process of, you know, getting angry and getting resentful and then then coming seeing what it's doing to me, because that's my practice as a course in miracle student is, is to remain in peace. And if I lose my peace, I know I'm off track. That's the real basic, simple thing of yeah. our guidance system is given to us to show us when we're on track and when we're off track, like, you know, spiritual teachings get very, very complicated, but that's really the foundational element of it. Um, God's will for us is happiness and joy and health and creativity and freedom. Those are qualities that are, you know, we are made in the image of God in that sense that we are loving, we're creative and we're freedom seeking. That, that's kind of the three descriptive words that Jesus uses when he's talking about our innate qualities. And so um, those things are, they're not negotiable in us. And if we step off the path of creativity, love and freedom, we start to feel bad. And that's what our guidance system is for. So, you know, they're really, really pushing people to do a course in miracles right now, because what they have said is, Course in Miracles is a spiritual mind training program. It's a program to 
help you master your own mind. And what they have said, and they've, what they've said is what we're witnessing, is that if you don't if you don't own your mind, somebody else will. And that's what we are seeing right now. We're seeing that the propaganda machine is literally getting people to do things that are not in their best interests. Mm -hmm. They don't own their own minds. They think they do. Right. But what I liken it to in, in helping me to be more compassionate is, is if you see a hypnotist on the stage, right, and they, are, they hypnotize someone into believing they're a chicken. Yeah. You don't get mad at them because they think they're a chicken. You're like, oh, my God, the power of hypnosis. That person doesn't even know who they are or where they are. This is mass hypnosis. Mm -hmm. yeah. So when I think about it that way, mm -hmm. then I'm not saying, oh, that, per that person who ditched you after 40 years, it it's literally not her doing that. Right. It's the program that she's running in her mind that's doing that. And but on the upside, um, let's talk about the truckers in Canada. Yes. Talk about this thing because right. this is what Jesus has been channeling about. He has said that this entire thing is an opportunity for us to regain our personal power and to stand in the power that we all have. We're all powerful creators. And, um, yeah, for those of you that don't know, there are, Something like 50,000 trucks on the highway heading to Ottawa. Uh, they just mandated the, uh, the thing for uh, truckers and truckers who cross the border. And they are en masse saying, absolutely not. They are not a risk to anyone. They're sitting in their trucks. And I've been watching videos for three or four days. And every single time I cry because I can see thousands of people. It's it's so cold in Winnipeg right now. I mean, it's just like, you know, you can see the freeze on these people. There are thousands and thousands and thousands of people standing on the side of the road with Canadian flags and Trudeau's calling them a fringe minority. Mm, yeah. They are anticipating 50,000 semi-truck trailers parked in Ottawa. 50,000 coming up from the States. The States too. Yeah. So they I, I have chills. My, I just have so many chills while you're saying this and I feel like crying right now. I mean, it's just such a testament to this, um, this part of the population. You have the, you know, the outspoken one end and the outspoken the other end, but in the middle, you have this 50 or 60% of people who have been just kind of going along because we didn't really know what was happening with this whole thing. And they've, Yes, they may, have, they may have been compliant and taken the uh, medicine, but they are seeing that something's terribly wrong now and that it's gone too far and it's going too far in Canada. They have absolutely no justification for this state of emergency that they keep extending. And they are talking about forced injections in Quebec. For oh. people who are, they now, are literally they, so do, like, do they just say, okay, you can't buy food anymore? If, I mean, they'll squeeze it so hard that you go do it. I, they're not going to really hold you down, are they? Or what? what well, who knows what that means? Who knows what forced injection mean? We don't know. We've, I mean, we're seeing things we've never seen before. Yeah. But the upside of this is the, <laughs> and it's so interesting that it's truckers because the politicians think they run everything, but they don't. The truckers run everything. The truckers, which you know, like, oh, your couch, you. that picture, your sweater. They all came to you by truck. Yes. And every single thing that every person uses comes by truck. Their milk, their televisions, everything. And I think, oh, this is so, this is such a brilliant thing. And I, I think. Well, I have seen a lot of empty shelves, uh, you know, at the stores. Mm -hmm. and, and yeah. keep so well, with this trucker thing, there's going to be a lot more and it's going to be catastrophic for su the supply chain in Canada. But I think. It's one of those things of we have um, to do it. It has to be done. You have to do it. You have to do it. It's like uh, I was talking to a friend this morning, and I, what came up was D-Day. You know, there was a point when they they came from England to the shores of France, and it was thousands of boats, mm -hmm. thousands and thousands of troops. And there are times in history when that is called for, and it is. It can be tough. Yes. 
And um, I'm very interested to hear what mm. Jesus has to say about this whole thing, because I'm interested to know, because there's certain people in this spiritual leaders or freedom fighters, something that say, this is only the beginning. We're going to have a, a credit, uh, like in, in China, pretty Full soon we're going to be chipped and had a credit. Well, score. I don't know if you've ever tried to do anything without a credit card or a driver's license. We already do have a social credit right, that social credit score. But if you don't do what you're told, then you can't, oh, you can't do this yep. now. You can't get on a train or you can't buy a plane ticket. Or you didn't do well, this. that's what's happening in Canada right now. If you're yeah. not vaccinated, you can't get on a plane. You can't get on a train. You can't. It is a social credit system. It's not coming. It is here already. Right, right. Yes, yes. So we, it's I'm curious. In the name that. Of, it's in the name of health. They're using yeah. a different excuse for doing it, yeah. but it is a social nothing credit about, system. Nothing about health. You know. No. Oh my gosh. All right. So, um, yeah. Do you want to ask? What? So, well, how do you want to do this? Do you want to ask a specific question or do you want um, to let Jesus do it? Why don't we let him say something and then we'll let him I say something and then that might spark. Yeah. An opening statement. Okay. All right. Okay. Okay. So let's let's see what Jesus has to say. <clears throat> Bringing in Jesus. You are blessed beings indeed. I am that one that you know as Jesus. Uh, the beings who are watching this may not have ever have seen channeling before. They certainly may have never seen somebody channeling Jesus before. And what we want to say to you is welcome. Welcome to the world of communication with spirit. Welcome to the world of expanded abilities. You all have abilities that you have not yet encountered because of the low frequency that your society keeps you in. So this is something that is um, pivotal for every single viewer who is watching this video, that you are subject to traumatic events from birth in your society that cause you to shut down your energy systems. So when you have a spiritual awakening such as this being had, uh, her spiritual awakening took place after 12 years of spiritual practice, relentlessly uh, self -inquir relentless self-inquiry as to why was she upset? Why was she angry? Why was she sad? Why was she suffering? And coming to understand that the interior experience that she was having was self-induced. And this is the big uh, aha moment for all of you is this idea of the world causing your problems or you causing your own problems. So what happens in the generative process of your life is that you come in with certain desires, certain beliefs, certain tendencies. You have come into this particular incarnation with a multiplicity of experiences that have that are setting you up and have set you up, not in the sense of the past making this present life, but in the sense that your oversoul, this orchestrating, um, overriding frequency that you might call your higher self, is constantly seeking information. And the information that it's seeking and the experiences that it is having come through physical incarnation. And you are not only having one, you are having a multiplicity of them. But the way your consciousness is set up and the way your belief systems are set up and the way you are trained in this society, time restricts you to this little tiny point of the now. But you are indeed a multifaceted being, a multidimensional being. But in this time and place, you have all come in to have a particular experience. And that is what's happening right now. The outside condition is reflecting an interior condition. So when you are coming at the current situation on your planet from a linear Newtonian physics kind of point of view, which is simple cause and effect along a one line of time, it looks like they are doing something to you or this person is doing this because of that. But what's happening uh, at, in this particular time and place is, is a reckoning of sorts. This is what we call the end of a spiritual season. And the end of a spiritual season is 
we would say like the end of a part in a book. You have your sentences, you have your paragraphs, you have your chapters, and then you have part one, part two, part three, epilogue. Well, this is like the end of part three. And what's happening at the end of part three in a book, for example, is that all of the characters will get, re there, there will be resolution. The bad guy might die, the loving couple might get married. Uh, there are those resolutions and you come to the end of a book and you think, oh, that was a good ending or that was a bad ending. It doesn't matter. Depends on how the ending uh, interacts with your conditioning programs, whether or not you like the ending or not. But this is what is happening on Earth at this time is all of you are being given the opportunity to see what you believe in and to see what you worship. This is the best way for all of you to look at this. What are you feeling? What are you seeing about yourself that you've never seen before? What are you experiencing emotionally? What are you willing to do? What are you inspired to do? Uh, the, the external condition is overriding aspects of your conditioning programs, which have said, for example, uh, so one conditioning program is, I always do as I'm told, so I don't get into trouble. That's a conditioning program that your schooling system teaches you. Think back to when you were in school. And, and if you talked when you weren't supposed to, you got, you got a penalty of some kind. If you were late, you got a penalty of some kind. If you, uh, came in from recess and you were too talkative, punishment of some kind. You're not allowed to go to the bathroom unless it's a break. You were trained from the time you were four or five years old to conform to this idea that if you didn't do as you were told, you would get punished. Mm -hmm. And that is what you're seeing playing out now is this unconscious conditioning program that if you don't do as you're told, you'll, you will get punished. Now, some of you have come into this incarnation and you've already learned that lesson that you value your freedom more than the threat of punishment. So what's happening when you're seeing people behave in very disparate ways is that you are seeing the lessons learned and the lessons unlearned. So for those of you that are seeing clearly what's happening and are uh, you've got a comprehensive understanding, you're curious about this piece of information or what that doctor has to say, you are not going to the propaganda stream to get your information. You are going all over the place. You're talking to different kinds of people. This is a healthy response to a situation that is difficult to figure out. If you're if somebody's in that propaganda stream, it is a very, very unnatural thing not to seek out other pieces of information. But why is it happening? Why are they responding in that way? It is, it is because they have not yet learned some lessons. It is because they are being shown what they believe in. You are being shown what you believe in. You believe in freedom of speech, inquiry, um, getting lots of different sides of the story. But the more fundamental thing that you're being shown is that you've already learned this lesson. Mm -hmm. So when you look at this as uh, an example of spiritual evolution, the most important thing is not to become, we will say, arrogant or cocky and go, okay, well, I've learned something that that person over there hasn't learned. I therefore am better. No, what, what, they, what they are going through is what you've gone through in a different incarnation. So you are no different than them. You just had a different experience. And they are being given the opportunity to learn something that you already learned. So we would like everybody to get away from this idea of division of they're dangerous. They are not dangerous. Nobody is a danger to you when you are in your power, when you're fully connected to source, you are almost invincible. You will have guidance that will tell you what to do because you are connected. You're, you're open to that stream of information through your intuition, through synchronicities, through your relationships with other people that you've cultivated by following your purpose. So this is another thing. When you are somebody who has been listening to your guidance for a very, very long time, your life trajectory has been transformed over 10, 15, 20 years. You are in a place that has been created from within your connection to source. A lot of these people have not done that. They have been 
deeply indoctrinated and conditioned. Uh, can, some people, it can be through, a, through an intense family program. Some people through trauma where they were uh, uh, abused and limited to such degree that they, they never had the courage to explore anything unusual or out of the ordinary. So this is a time of compassion for all of those people that are going through all of those experiences. So this is really the most fundamental thing for anybody who's on a spiritual path to really um, get connected with is that you're all on the same road. Some of you are just further along the road than others. Where is the road leading you? The road is leading you to love. Now, those beings that are not loving themselves or, for example, uh, creating an unhealthy future for themselves, they are further away from love. So they are, they are tending towards a frequency match that is less loving. Those of you that have been learning to love yourselves and, and loving yourselves by listening to your guidance I don't want to do that anymore. I'd like to do this. I don't like this job anymore. I'm going to train to do that. That is what love looks like. It's an alignment. It's a congruency. Thought, word, and deed are a match. So those of you that are more in a more uh, balanced response to what's going on, you are more congruent. You know how you feel. You know what you're thinking. And what you say is the same. Mm -hmm. So this is really a demonstration, not not as a judgment day, not as a punishment, but so that you all can see what you believe in. When you see that you're afraid and you're doing something because somebody's frightening you, you will have a realization, oh, my actions are being influenced by somebody outside of me who I don't even know who's telling me scary stories. To see that in, and to realize that that's how you're behaving is an opportunity, a spiritual opportunity to really grasp that you are not in charge of your own behavior. And this is a place of free will. This is the fundamental thing that aids you in your spiritual development is your ability to have an experience, learn from it and choose again. In A Course in Miracles, I talk always about the opportunity to choose again. And this is what's coming up for many people that have taken the uh, government's advice is they've done it, they believed that what they were told, and now they're realizing that it's not what they said would happen is not happening. You haven't got your freedom, you haven't got this, you're still wearing the face coverings. And so what's happening is that there is a mass awakening from those in the middle ground that they were lied to. And now they have a decision to make and the tide is turning. The tide is turning and it's going to turn into a tsunami. We want to reassure you of that. It's going to turn into a tsunami because as the truth is revealed about all of the aspects of what has been going on in the last couple of years, as the truth is revealed, the vital life force of the masses is going to rise up and some of it is going to be in anger and rage because that is a higher frequency than powerlessness. Mm -hmm. So if you look at the emotional guidance system of the emotional scale, depression and powerlessness are lower than anger and uh, um, intense emotion. So this is something that can be expected over the coming months is that, that you are going to see a step up from powerlessness into anger and action. Action doesn't happen when you're depressed and feeling powerless, but it does happen when you're feeling angry. And it's very, very important as spiritual students to understand that when you see people getting angry that they have stepped up their frequency out of powerlessness, out of depression, out of feeling that they can't do anything. So this, you just don't want to stay in anger very long and you don't want it to be violent. You don't want it to be uh, physically directed in at one person, for example. However, when you get a million people rising up out of powerlessness, something's going to happen. And that is what you're seeing with the truckers in Canada right now. You are seeing 
the true backbone of that country straightening up. Mm. It's been bent over. It's been weighed down by the bureaucracy and the requirements. But it's just like somebody who's depressed, curled over, and then they go, you know what? I'm not taking this anymore. What happens? They stand up straight. And the trucks are the spine. They are the, the system that keeps any country going right now. And that is what you're seeing. You're seeing powerlessness rise up into anger and action. And so we want you to understand that this is going to be happening within a lot of people. Even those people that heretofore have been compliant are seeing that something is terribly wrong. And from, a, from an overall spiritual point of view, the frequency of your planet is going up, believe it or not. It's going up because what was hidden is being shown and what previously was acceptable is now becoming unacceptable. And it really is coming from this place of all of you being made in the image of God, which is what loving, creative, freedom seeking. Those are the innate qualities that are God-given. And if they are thwarted for any amount of time, spirit rises up and says, we can't function within this system. We have to have these things. We have to have access to these things or we can't be here living on this planet. So, so this is a very, very al uh, uh, alchemical time. And there will be many beings who do not, stay here mm -hmm. there are going to be many beings who do not stay here because they were not at a stage of their spiritual development to be able to manage what is coming so we want to reassure everybody that salvation is guaranteed for everyone it is guaranteed for everyone but at the end of a spiritual season it is just like your graduation ceremony if you've done the work you get to go into a post-secondary education if you don't if you don't do the work you don't get your grade 12 certificate and you have to repeat some lessons mm -hmm. so is that punishment in a school when they say you didn't pass you have to go back no it's because you cannot graduate until you've learned those lessons there's no point in graduating somebody from grade 12 if they can't read and write they're not going to learn anything in university the same thing goes for spiritual graduation if you have not learned the basics, you cannot go on to the next level. And that's what the end of a spiritual season means. It is not a punishment. It is not retribution from an ang angry God. It is another opportunity for you to learn. And that is what's happening on the earth right now. We will take a short break. Ooh, good stuff. Oh, yeah, good. Because I have some questions when he's ready to... <laughs> ready to come back <laughs> yeah usually what i like to do when um he's channeling is i kind of come out for the question and i don't know why i have to do that it's just the process of channeling for some reason it stops when when the question comes up and i think it might be me i don't think he needs to do that but i think it might be something i need to do i don't know why <laughs> yeah. And for people who are, um, there are people who just can't wrap their minds around channeling. And I know some people personally who say, no, that's fake. It's not true. It's, you know, the da -da -da. Well, what I say to somebody who says that I say, you try and do what, what I just did for 10 minutes. Yes. Without it, breathing, without thinking, no pause. It's absolutely impossible. I can't do it. When I'm talking as a normal person, I have these breaks. I think about things. There's ums and ahs. There's you know, <clears throat> that stream of consciousness is not me. It's absolutely not me. And I challenge anyone to fake channeling. I've, right. I, I've never right. seen anyone. I do it. some channeling too with my angels or guides, or I'll channel some information through and, and I, it, I couldn't fake it. It would sound you'd, Yeah. Like you'd be grasping for words. What will oh, I yeah. say? Or yeah. Yeah. So um, also, I think it was uh, Jesus or you were, was talking about how the chant in the beginning, the channeling process. So because we're all one, we're all frequency and energy. And so just because people see these bodies, they think, oh, no, you, you can't talk to an angel or a spirit guide or something. But we are because we're in touch all the time with even when you think about somebody and then they call on the phone, you, you thought about that person. So it's it's um, well, what comes to mind is the history of um this kind of communication 
you know, in our society for several hundred years, if you had any spiritual communication, you were burnt at the stake. Mm -hmm. So what I see is that there was there was a deep indoctrination in in Judeo-Christian society that it was extremely dangerous for anybody to do anything like this. And I think it's taken us a few centuries to recover um, all of those people that were burnt were women who were living in the woods. They were healers. They were channelers. They were, yeah, you were, yeah, we were all probably part of that group. And it was such a terrifying time for women. I mean, entire villages had all the women in the villages killed. So if you had a daughter who was psychic, you would beat it out of her to save her life. Mm -hmm. So imagine that we've come out of that phase and even in the 50s or 60s, people were put in mental institutions. And trust me, when I first started channeling Jesus, I was like, oh, my God, either the Catholic Church is going to come for me or they're going to take me away in a white jacket. I, I literally had to sit down and go, are you going to do this, Tina? Because this is dangerous. So I live in a modern society. I, li I lived at the time in a free country, and I still had that programming, which is, this is dangerous. Mm -hmm. Where does that come from? It comes from this history of persecution. And so all of us are shut down. All of us are terrified. In the first book that Ananda channeled through me, Making Love to God, they said that the fear of possession mm -hmm. and the fear of ins being thought insane are what shuts down everybody's spiritual connection to their guides and teachers. We all have it. These abilities are universal. But the training programs and, and the trauma that we've been through in the society over centuries has shut it down in us. So we're seeing a mass awakening. That's why you're seeing more and more people channeling. Like in my community, there are probably 20 people who are channeling now from do, by doing A Course in Miracles and, and working with each other mm. and these teachings. There are people who now have full-time professions as channelers and they started doing the course three or four years ago, and they were doing something completely different. So the, the opportunity for the awakening of these abilities now is absolutely tremendous. And I just encourage anybody who wants to open up these abilities to do A Course in Miracles because it is a, a loving text that raises your mind out of trauma and fear into faith and love through forgiveness practice. So it's the true teachings of God, uh, true teachings of Jesus without the church involved. Mm -hmm. He's and just teaching you how to be more loving internally so that you can manifest externally a more loving world. I love that. And, but I, there's still some, I noticed there's still some of that, uh, that, that mind stuff and persecution. So we're, we're talking about, you know, I talked about the one friend of 40 years who said, you know, you're out. And then I, I, this is, it's been 2021 just kicked my butt so hard. It was so <laughs> weird. There's four friends now gone that I was in total. I, it was interesting. I was in shock, but I was just willing to release it. So another friend of 51 years, like a brother, I never would have imagined uh, we wouldn't be friends. And I get a, t a nasty text, uh, you know, because I'm like, how come you're not, you know, trying to see me more? You're not, yep, what's you know, and, and I felt something. I said, what's going on here? And he says, well, he sent me a long text, but the just the crux of it was the things that I can't see you because the things that you are doing and involved in is, is condemned by the Bible. And if I would be near you, I'm afraid I will get a curse or maybe oh. a demon would come on me. And, and if you, but we could be friends if you repent and repent to God and take Jesus into your life and, and I will help you, but you're going to have to stop doing your tarot cards. You're going to have to stop. And those angels that you talk to Marla, those aren't angels. Those are fallen angels. Those are demons. So you don't know. And you, so again, it's like imposing what they want me to do. This one wanted me to get this. This one wants me to stop my my mm -hmm. angel stuff in my Oracle cards and say, and I'm like, Hey, you know, I'm just sitting over here, minding my own business doing my thing. Doing my thing. For me. Like you do what I say, or we're out after 50 years of friend. So um, he's uh, this fear. Okay. And then in that, I just want to add, there are many people in the Christian community who think that this is the 
um, the what rapture the in the last the rapture five, or what is well, it? Well, this is very interesting because I've well, there's done another a lot. name for it. I'm just blanking. The harvest. Well, in the in the law of, the, in in the law of one, they talk about the harvest. In traditional Christian terms, they talk about the rapture. And in these teachings, they're calling it the Armageddon. End of, or whatever. Armageddon, yeah. They're calling it the end of a spiritual season. End of times. So, so I think what these these are all referring to the same thing, but they're they're coming out of different different paradigms, different dogmas, different worldviews, and um, I think the the thing that I truly believe is that we are, as as Jesus said. You are being shown what your friends and you believe in. You are, we are all being shown our idols. So we all have faith in things, right? We all have faith in things. So the religious friend has faith in that dogma. The, the, the pro-injection person has faith in the mainstream story. Um, each one, it's being revealed to them. It's being revealed to you too, but it's being revealed to them. They can hear the words coming out of their own mouth. And I think that that's the opportunity that each of us have. Like as I've been going through this exodus from Canada, I'm looking at what is my value system? Why did I do this? Why do I want to go home? Why can't I do that? I'm unconscious things are coming conscious and I'm being given the opportunity to refine the way I make decisions and to really feel what I believe. Like all of these emotions that I've been coming. I was talking to a friend this morning and I said, I've spent the last four days crying. When I see these truckers, I cry. Mm -hmm. And I think about it and I'm like, what is going on inside of me? And I think it's, it's, a, it's such a sense of relief of seeing people stand up in their power. And that's something I've had to learn to do in, in this channeling job. I've been called daughter of Satan. I mean, trust me, I've been called every name under the sun for doing this. And I've had to develop a very thick skin. Yeah. to keep doing it and go, you know what, if you, you know, I don't, I never read comments, for example, it's just like, don't do that, Tina. Um, but this teaching is changing people's lives and, and it's transforming people into a more self-realized person. And, and that's what I look at is like what Jesus says, you know, by their fruits, ye shall know them by their fruits, ye shall know them. And you know that your life makes you happy. And yes, it's kicked your butt, but here you are, you probably have become more refined after 2021. You know, you're even more clear about what you value and what you believe in. Yeah. So in a way, when we get our butts kicked, it's our ego being deconstructed and the true part of us is still there, yes. right? The true part of us is still there. And that's what I feel I've been through the ringer in the last few months with this whole leaving Canada thing. You know, I left my kids, I left my house, I left my, you know, it was like, ah. Oh. Um, so, you know, you know, I'm learning about myself and I'm learning my values. And I think seeing the truckers, for example, that is my heart's desire for everybody to stand in their power and say, this is unacceptable. This is abuse. This is an abusive relationship. Yeah. And I think that that's, some people get out of abusive relationships. Yeah. Some people die in abusive relationships. Right. Some people stay in them forever and unhappy. And I think that's what we're seeing. We're going to see people who die in that abusive relationship. We're going to see people who stay in it. Mm. And we are going to see people who leave it. And I think we have to just be there for the people who leave it and strengthen our own spiritual practice, strengthen our own connection to the divine through our passion. Our passion is our purpose. You know, your love of the psychic and the intuitive and the wacky and the spooky in the left field, that's your passion. It makes you happy. How do you know? Because you do it even if you're not getting paid for it. Yes. Right? You know. Oh, and, yeah. and we all have that. Our passion is our purpose. And I think that's one of the great indoctrinations in this society and and jesus has talked about this suffering and sacrifice and martyrdom make you holy no they don't they make you sad and miserable and resentful mm -hmm. following your passion following your heart turns you into a happy person that has so much more to give you know you think of all the people you've talked to all of the people all the videos you've made and the books you've written 
It's yeah. because you're happy in your own purpose. Yeah. Even if I'm talking to someone, I'll just pull out my cards and say, do you want me to pull a few cards? Like I don't, you know, I just love yeah. it so much. And then they're so yeah. happy. Oh, they, oh, I got a reading, a little mini reading today. Thank yeah. you. And, yeah. and it's just like play it's play. Yeah. Okay. What well, took, can you got a specific question? Yeah. I have Jesus? a specific, specific question for, for Jesus, because um, I know in your, so people who maybe you're seeing this for the first time, or you don't know, Tina, and this, uh, there, you've channeled, she's channeled books, uh, G- Jesus talking about his life, talking about, and I've done, I think, a video about it with, with you about how much of the Bible is really true, because there's these people, the ones that like cut me off, because I, they think I'm like on the evil side of things that every single word of this Bible is true. And you've spoken about that. And I, I'd love to ask Jesus about this end times. They're the, oh, this is the end, end times. So what do they think? They think we're going to be, you know, uh, floated up into the air, the ones that are the believers or the world's going to blow up or what. And, and what about this portion in the Bible? Just maybe talk a little bit about, you know, the truth of, of it. It was written, you know, many years after Jesus and people mm-hmm. edited it. And it was the, the political time, you know. Yeah. We have to realize the Romans were in <clears throat> charge and, you know, there were like nowadays, was, there like, was an they're, agenda. They're, they're running the narrative. They were running the narrative just like today, fake news or, you know, <laughs> so. Um, okay. Let's yeah, see so. what he has to say. Okay. Great. <clears throat> you are blessed beings. Indeed. I am that one that, you know, as Jesus, one of the restrictions that we have to have when we are discussing these kinds of things with those of you that are in the 3D experience is that we cannot tell you things that are going to frighten you because this is your weak point. This is your Achilles heel, if you will. Uh, When, if we said to you uh, next September, there's going to be a big flash in the sky and the good people are going to go to heaven and the bad people are going to go to hell. This would not serve anybody because you would all think that you're going to be the bad group. Because that's the way your minds work. You don't think you're good enough. You don't love yourselves enough. You are always hard on yourselves. So there is this idea of judgment day as, as a terrifying thing. What we would like you to know is that the, at the end of a spiritual season, there is an opportunity for you to upgrade your consciousness if you can pass the test. What is the test? The test is how loving are you? The test is how much control does the ego have over your decisions? What does the ego use as its method of control? It uses fear, separation, judgment, and guilt. So to the degree that you have those things active in you, that means that you've got more work to do. To the degree that you have a a deep-seated feeling of peace residing within you, with small ups and downs, let's say, because if you're still in a body on this plane, you've still got work to do. So the fact of the matter is you all have work to do. Here you are in these separate, these seemingly separate bodies. What that means is that you are in an environment and a level of consciousness that believes in separation, or you would not be in a separate body. You would not perceive yourself as an individual. When you encounter an enlightened being, they don't have strong personal boundaries. They might just wander in your house. They might just uh, take their clothes off. They might do things that you would deem inappropriate because they no longer see themselves as an individual. And that's what the master teachers throughout history have often been like. They are so loving and so powerful and so connected that they have a mastery over the physical material world. Why? Because the physical material world is the ego's playground. This is the ego's playground here. This is the place where your belief in separation is manifested. That's what this place is. That's why it's so challenging. That's why it's so difficult. That is why you die. You die because you believe in separation and you believe in sickness and you believe in restriction and resistance. So your guidance system is the place to go to rather than saying, what is the ascension going to look like? Because most of you have no idea where you're going to fit in that journey. So 
if we told you exactly what would happen, that the thing that your ego mind would do would be looking at all the things that you are not good at. Oh, I got mad at this person. I'm, I'm afraid of poverty. I'm, I'm very self-conscious about my body. My hair never looks right. Um, I don't like them. They said something. You, your ego would go to all of the bad things or the things that you feel are unresolved, and it would tell you, because it's unloving, it would tell you that you are not going to make it. So we stay away from that because we understand how your minds work and we understand how the ego, which is very, very strengthened in this society, works. Why is it strengthened in this society? Why are your televisions pumping out fear 24-7? Why are they doing that? They are doing that in an attempt to stop the ascension process. They know that it's coming. They know that this is written in the stars. It is indeed written in the stars because there are spiritual seasons, just as there are weather seasons. It's like somebody trying to stop the spring coming. They can protect the ice and snow. They can put shade over it so the sun doesn't melt it. But eventually spring is going to make the snow melt. And that's where you're at right now in your society. You are coming out of, a, of the dark ages of control and fear and separation. Just look at the wars that have been going on on your planet. Look at the people who are starving. There is no need for any of this. This earth is so abundant and so productive and so healthy for you. There is enough on this planet for everyone. And you are seeing how the the money and the wealth is being sucked away from ordinary people. This is a dark age that you are coming out of. And those in charge are putting the blankets over the snow in an effort to stop the sun melting the snow. So the sun, spring is coming and the snowdrops are going to come through the snow and the daffodils are going to come and then the roses and then you're going to be in full-blown summer. It is just this period of time right now where the powers that be that you have allowed to take your power, you have given them all your tax money, you have said yes, yes. When they say sit down, you sit down. When they say stand up, you stand up. And this is learned through your schooling tra training program. This is a time now where the blanket that they are putting over in an attempt to stop the spring coming is suffocating you. And you are beginning to fight and say, no, I want the sun. I want the light. I want the warmth. I want the abundance. I want the health. I want the freedom. I want the creativity. It is innate in all of you and it is coming. So what we want you to focus on is how do you align yourself with that higher frequency of spring? What is spring? Spring is optimistic. Spring is full of life force coming up through the ground. Spring is pollination. Spring is beautiful. It's a relief. So what we want you to focus on is this idea of how do I get relief in my senses? How do I get to feel as if spring is coming? You look for the good. You look for the little flower breaking through the snow. What does that mean in your terms of your life? Be grateful for what you have. Where are you using your freedom right now? You have tremendous freedom. Are you using it? Are you writing letters to your members of parliament or your senators and telling them that you don't like what they're doing? Or are you just saying, I don't like what they're doing and flicking onto the next channel? Use the freedom you've got or you will lose it. Why? Because this is a place of learning. This is a place of reflection. This is not a place of moral judgment. The universe is reflecting you back to you. So if you have freedom and you're not using it, the universe says they don't care about freedom. Okay, well, then we're not going to give them freedom. If you care about freedom and you're, uh, or you care about education or you care about creativity, pick a subject. It doesn't matter. It just happens to be freedom right now. Pick a subject. Are you being creative? Well, no, I don't have time. Well, we would challenge any of you that are not being creative to look at your day and say, well, you have 24 hours a day just like anybody else does. How come they're creative and you're not? And you could go, well, 
I don't have time. Let's look at what you're doing. What are you doing with your time? Are you scrolling endlessly on your computer? Are you watching television? Are you whatever it is you're doing? Everybody's got the same 24 hours each day. What are you doing with it? Now, we know that we are avoiding the question that you asked us, but what we want you to know is that all of those stories, Armageddon, the harvest, the, the rapture, all of these things are telling the same story, the end of a spiritual season. What we are trying to convey to you is to take advantage of that end of a spiritual season is an internal journey. It is what frequency are you holding? Don't worry about what's going to happen physically to you because if your frequency is high, you will have a wonderful experience. That's how a reflective universe works. If you let go of your resentments and you forgive yourself for the silly mistakes you made when you were in your 20s or your teens, if you let go of that thing that your brother said to you or you let go of that thing that your friend did to you, and you keep all of your essence to yourself because all of those little resentments, all of those past things are draining you. They're taking your power. Through the practice of forgiveness, you reinvigorate yourself and you say, okay, this is me. This is what I'm going to be focusing on here because I love it. This is I'm only going to do things I love from now on to the best of my ability. And if I have set something up in my life that I don't like, I'm going to start making the changes to move away from that thing. Some of you have deeply entrenched behaviors that you don't like that you decided 20 years ago you were going to take on. And if you want to change that thing, you have to make a thousand small steps to get away from it into something new. Start that today. Your frequency is set. It's very easy to know what your frequency is. Are you peaceful? Are you happy? That's a high frequency. If you're peaceful and happy, you are doing the right thing for you. Remember, each one of you has an individual blueprint. Each one of you has a different assignment here. Each one of you has a different purpose. Some of you are meditators. Some of you are frontline rebels and revolutionaries. You're not going to have the same purpose. So stop judging what other people are doing. Bring all your power back to yourself so that you're feeling happy and content and then focus on what you want to bring into manifestation. Do you want to go back to school? Do you want to get fit and healthy? Do you want to find a partner? Do you want to have a baby? Do you want to have a successful business? It doesn't matter. Your purpose is going to reveal to you through that journey of enjoyment why you came here on this planet at this time. Some people think, oh, well, I love gardening. Well, that's not going to save the planet. Well, guess what? It just might when there's no food in the stores. Or other, another person may go, oh, well, I like, I like painting and that, you know, painting pictures. Well, that doesn't change people's lives. Yes, it does. This being here has painted thousands and thousands of pieces of artwork. And to this day, there are thousands of people that look at her artwork and think, ah, oh, I love that little piece of artwork. They're raising, it's raising people's frequencies all around the planet, all of the thousands of pieces of artwork that she's done. It is actually contributing to the life that she is living right now. The fact that all of those people look at all of those pieces of artwork in appreciation. So don't underestimate the ability that you have to work miracles in this life, but you must train your minds. And before we go, we want to say that to you. If you don't own your mind, somebody else already owns your mind. So think about taking a course in miracles. Think about tuning into this being's videos. There are hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of videos on YouTube where all of these teachings are revealed in depth. And if you're super interested, this being has a community and she does retreats online. Uh, and that is the offering that she brings through. She knows that she, she suffered terribly before A Course in Miracles. Mm -hmm. And now she does not suffer unless her mind is off track. And she knows that when she suffers, she's off track. She's doing something incorrect with her thinking. And so she can correct her mind very, very quickly. You too can learn not to suffer. And that is really what my teachings were 2,000 years ago. You do not need to suffer. Forgive them for they know not what they do. And that is what the message of today is. You know them by the, the fruits that come from the seeds they are planting. Are you looking at your government seeing good things coming? 
Are you seeing happy people? Are you seeing thriving people? Are you seeing healthy people? Or are you seeing angry people, divided people, sick people? Begin to use your innate intelligence as a way of discerning who you should follow. I am that one that you know is Jesus, and I'll speak to you again at another time. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, <laughs> Tina. That was beautiful. And speaking of, I always think, you know, and speaking of channeling, that's really what um, Jesus was doing back then when he was, yeah, you know, he was channeling. He was channeling. Um, Anyone's really curious. Um, Jesus, my autobiography is the book that he channeled. And yeah, I was not happy about this. Just so you know, when he first came through, um, he was the last person in my book, Great Minds Speak to You, which is I channeled 20 dead celebrities, and he was the 20th celebrity. Mm -hmm. And um, I was not happy about I was just like, Oh, just don't be Jesus. And it was him in the last the last chapter of that book. And then the next morning he came through and he said, I want you to write my autobiography, but first you have to read the New Testament. Mm -hmm. And I was not happy about this at all. I'm like, this is not an assignment I wanted consciously. But of course, we have these assignments that we right. don't remember. And now, after doing this for 10 years, my life has been so transformed by these teachings and thousands and thousands of people, I've watched them and I, they send me emails they, these teachings are transforming people's lives for the better. And that's what he means by their fruits, you shall know them. And that's for anyone who doubts this teaching or doubts that this is good rather than evil. Mm -hmm. I just ask them to look at the results and the results are people's lives are improving. And my life, my life has been transformed into this wonderful adventure. And it doesn't mean I don't have issues and I'm, I'm going through my own uh, self-realization process. But the, the training of A Course in Miracles gives you the tools to understand what's happening in your feelings and in your thoughts and in your life. When you look around at your life and you see that something is not working, it's coming from us. And that's, that's the great thing about A Course in Miracles. There's no one else to blame but ourselves. But the good thing about that is you can fix it because it's yes. coming from, from yourself. I'm going to get so. my copy down off my shelf and start working through it. And, and I, I know how important it is to do those lessons, the daily lesson. Yeah. And I always had a resistance to it. It's so strange. But I've read the text and I love the text. Yeah. But I need to do that. Well, the lessons, um, what happens is the, our, egos don't want to, doesn't, they don't, our egos don't want to do this. They mm -hmm. know it's the end of them. Mm. Our egos know this. Uh, and it's, it's exactly the same as, um, let's say, a very, very overweight person who's sitting on a couch and they see somebody who's ripped and very fit running past and they go, I don't want this anymore. I want that. Yeah. Yeah. But what do they have to do? They have to completely give up what they believe in, overeating, fast food, no exercise. If you get a personal trainer in for a year, they'll say to you, I can get you looking like that and doing that, but you have to do what I tell you, not what you want to do. Right. What you want to do has got you fat and lazy on the couch. If you listen to me for a year, I can help you. And yeah. that's really what Jesus is saying with the lessons in all of us is look where you got yourself mm -hmm. by doing what you want to do. And yeah. I don't mean Marla, I mean us individually. Right. If you do these lessons, I can take you somewhere new, but you have to follow me for a year, not your ego. Mm. And that's the fact is most of us are so heavily conditioned and so trained that we're following our egos when we, are, when we don't think we are. Yes, absolutely. And, and really, it's a, it's a practice of faith and surrender, which is very, very challenging. It's not an easy thing to do. And as you go into the lessons and they, they require more and more discipline for, from you, it's just like going to the gym. It's like, oh, now I have to do 50 sit-ups. They're going to move the weights up and I've got to do, you know, it becomes harder and harder, but you get fitter and fitter. Mm -hmm. It's spiritual fitness. That's what it is. So it's just like going to a spiritual gym. You know, when you first go to the gym, you can do two sit-ups and you get tired after 10 minutes. But each day you can do more and more and more. And after a year of going to the gym, you're like, oh, my God, I've lost 50 pounds and I feel great. Yeah. That's what the course lessons will do for people. It will it will do the same thing spiritually that exercise does for you physically. And, it, and your frequency was was so transformed that it could hold that Kundalini awakening that you had the Kundalini. That's right. That's yeah. right. And, and the six months before that Kundalini awakening, 
I had such an intense forgiveness practice. I was praying all the time and I didn't know what it was going to do. I wasn't doing it to get an effect. Right. I was just seeing that my mind was tormenting me and I, I refused to do it anymore. I would not allow any conflict in my mind. And, and Kundalini awakenings are actually often precipitated by intense focus. So mm -hmm. sometimes when people are studying for exams, they'll have a Kundalini awakening. Mm. And so that's what yogis are actually doing in that intense focus of the asanas. Yeah. They're trying to get a Kundalini awakening. So that's what the yogi is trying to get. I, I did it through studying A Force in Miracles. Absolutely didn't know what was going to happen. I probably wouldn't have had the courage to do it if I'd known. Mm -hmm. But what I saw was that my mind was suffering because of the, the thoughts I was believing. Yeah. And so I became so intense on transforming my inner world that I triggered this event, mm. which is all in Making Love to God. That's my first book, Making Love to God. So that's if your you're, story of what if happened. You're curious okay. about how it happened. I detailed the whole thing in there. All right. So you guys, I put the links below and the links to Tina's uh, site, but just tell everybody where they can find you. Okay. Um, my website is channelingjesus.com. And we have actually a couple, we have a couple of online retreat events coming up in February, one from Sedona and one, uh, we still have actually in-person retreat spots in San Antonio, Texas. Mm. Um, but the um, both of the retreats are being broadcast online. So you can sign in from anywhere in the world. Uh, and those uh, you can leave your email uh, on our website at channelingjesus.com and you will receive links to those things. We're sending out a couple of links over the next couple of weeks mm -hmm. with all of the information for that. And I do also have an online community of a couple of thousand people now, actually. Uh, it's on Mighty Networks, and it has a library of a 1,000 videos of me channeling. <laughs> uh, there's about 150 videos that have never been seen on, on YouTube of me uh, channeling sessions. And you get uh, two live streams a month in your membership and an access to a community, which is, which is very vibrant and growing. So, yeah, things are fantastic. Are Oh, yeah. you do such great work in the world. Thank you, Tina. It's so wonderful to have you back and uh, check it all out. You guys, the, her site is flashing up on the screen and all the links are below. And I'm just wishing everyone a blessed, uh, beautiful day. Bye. Everybody. Okay, thanks. Bye. Bye.